Welcome back to Life and Style uh, Thursday edition. That's Inspirational Thursday. Thank you so much, Tendai, for, you know, exposing me to such amazing technology. Right now, we are on Motivate and I have Daniel Juma Omonde, who's the Executive Director of Global Peace Foundation Kenya. And we're all about motivating, inspiring, and making sure that people out there know that uh, you don't get to places that you are by just waking up. It wasn't up to you, honestly, silver platter. Yes. You had to work your way through that. Karim yeah. Busana to Life and Style. Thank you for having me. So we try to look at uh, you as a person, mm -hmm. how you started, where you began, to the person that you've become. Mm -hmm. We could just take us back before we get to the Global Peace Foundation. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, <clears throat> my name is Daniel Juma Omondi, and I'm the, Glo uh, the, the director of the Global Peace Foundation mm -hmm. in Kenya. Uh, basically, I grew up, I was born in Nairobi, okay. and um, uh, I schooled in the rural area, mm -hmm. in a school called Karuoth uh, Primary School. Okay. And uh, I went to Kuala, uh, you know, Kuala High School. And uh, basically my formative stages was in the, in the rural setting, okay. even though I was born in Nairobi. <laughs> I remember walking uh, from school, uh, from home to school. I remember even the school that I attended, Sigwen Karuoth uh, Primary School, we, were, we actually built it from standard one. We were being pushed by the headmaster to go and br bring stones. Bring know, stones to build the school. To, to build a school. The so students. Imagine we were, the students. So we were inside one at the same time. We had to actually literally build the school. It wasn't an easy one and walking long distance to, you know, to go and get the materials to build the schools. Mm -hmm. And um, what I learned basically was uh, that uh, really life is not easy. So... And uh, growing up in the village, um, the, the, my, the, the principal at that time, mm -hmm. his name was uh, Odiambo, he was very tough, very tough on us. But what I liked about him was that he was very strict and he was a, a, a good English speaker. Okay. And uh, that's one of the gifts I, I, I learned from him, <laughs> eloquence. And, um, you know, he could never forgive you if you made any any mistake, grammatical mistakes, spelling mistakes, he would never forgive it. Yes, fast forward to that. Uh, I studied uh, international relations at the University of Nairobi. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I also had a stint where I, I lived in Korea. I, uh, and before I went to Korea, I was involved also in the beauty pageant, pageant industry. Beauty uh, pageant? Yes. What were we, you doing We there? started uh, doing uh, Mr. and Ms. University. Remember when the beauty yes. pageants were started? Yes. I actually got involved in uh, organizing Mr. and Ms. University in Kenya. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you hear about Mr. and Ms. UN, Mr. and Ms. Yes. Uh, USIU. All these universities. We started. And now if you see what's going on in the country, every university uh, has Mr. and Ms. And they're looking forward uh, to that event every year. The reason we did that is we wanted to create role models in campuses. Mm. As you know, the culture of bad is, is everywhere. Uh, many guys think it's cool to be bad and stuff like that. So yeah. we wanted to create a few young people in the universities who, who are good, who are moral and innovative, and they're proud of, proud of it. Um, and then um, basically uh, I, I worked for 10 years huh, mm -hmm. for the government of Korea. You worked for 10 years for the Korean government. For the Korean what government. Were you, what were you doing for Yeah, them? basically, I, 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 mean, I was promoting trade and investment. Okay. This from the, two, from the year 2000. Mm -hmm. uh, Korea has uh, uh, an institution called COTRA, which is basically uh, the, the, the office of the commercial attaché institutionalized. Mm -hmm. So this office is just to promote trade and investment, to sell Korea and the products that come from Korea into this region. So I worked as a trade officer, and my work was to do market research for Korean products coming into this region. Mm -hmm. I remember we were there before Samsung, LG came, so we, we were there trying to push Korean products in this market. Uh, my office was, uh, was based in Nairobi, but we were in charge of East Africa, the okay. region. I could go travel to Tanzania, Uganda, you know, promoting Korean, you know, Korean products huh, in this region. I'm a believer in the Korean model of development. And um, that's one of the things that I try to promote because I believe that um, Korea, everyone always talks about, and even when President Burma was here, mm -hmm. he spoke about Korea 40 years ago, yeah, yeah. Kenya was like Korea. Mm -hmm. But today, if you go to Korea, you'll find that it is highly developed. 
True. Well, it's amazingly developed. Mm -hmm. Coming from the, the plane into going to the migration, you use the fast train. And if you look at the kind of infrastructural development that we have there, mm -hmm. and then you are told that 40 years ago we were this, we were at par. I'm telling you, it's, it's amazing. So in whatever I try to do, I always try to encourage that kind of model of de development. And uh, there's something called the New Village Movement in Korean called Semao Lundong, which is basically organizing the community to come together to find solutions uh, for their problem. So oh. um, after 10 years working for the Korean go uh, government, I joined uh, the Global Peace Foundation. Mm -hmm. um, that time I joined the Department of Global Peace Youth. It's called Global Peace Youth Corps. And um, I, was, I was the CEO uh, at that time. And uh, so I moved from economic diplomacy yes. to peace diplomacy. Okay. Yeah, so it has why, been an amazing... Why the, why the shift? Why the shift, the shift from economic uh, diplomacy to, you know, peace Because diplomacy, di diplomacy is diplomacy. Okay. But uh, I remember uh, 10 years into, I mean, serving as a, I mean, uh, doing economic diplomacy, I think mm -hmm. it was enough. I, I believe that I shouldn't do one thing for more than 10 years. Okay. So I needed a change. I needed something more exciting, mm -hmm. you know, and um, I looked at, um, uh, you know, peace as one of the areas that I would want to, to work in. Um, and at the Global Peace Foundation, we, do, uh, as you know, peace is not just absence of war. It's we just true. don't look, look at peace as absence of war. Mm. Um, we look at peace from the structural point of view, where you say if, uh, if you have young people, like, and right now we have a bulge of many youths who don't have employment, mm -hmm. who, don't, who don't have jobs. So if you have a youth that are idle, that don't have jobs, then they become idle, I mean, they become available for misuse. How mm -hmm. do you engage them to make sure that they're not, you know, ready for misuse, as you said? So we come up with interventions. Okay. Um, uh, we come up with interventions to be able to address that. And uh, right now in Kenya, we came up with a, pro with, with a program called Character and Creativity Initiative. And uh, this one, we started doing it since 2010, um, basically instilling integrity, character, discipline in young people when they're young. So we did pilots in our high schools, okay. in like Buruburu High School, you know, Alliance High School, Karubangi North, almost 10 schools okay. since 2010. And... Mm -hmm. um, uh, after some time, 2013, we, uh, we had uh, an evaluation done by Kipra, you know, that went into these schools to find out, you, you know, the impact of the program that we have been having in these schools. And the report, which is available in the Kipra website, mm -hmm. actually sh proved that if you are insisting on character um, and um, creativity, mm -hmm. you know, in high school students, when they're young, then you achieve three things. Mm -hmm. Number one, cases of indiscipline go, go down. Mm -hmm. Number two, the relationship between faculty, the faculty and students improve. Uh -huh. Number three, which is the most important thing, is the uh, you know, academic performance of these schools actually go, go, up. go up. And then the report also re recommended that, um, fine, so you have instilled character, so what next? So mm -hmm. you talk about creativity. So we started something in high schools called Leap Hubs. So Leap Hubs are spaces, maybe you've heard about iHub, yes, but these are spaces in high school. Mm -hmm. where students come in to incubate their business ideas, oh. you know, to learn about, you know, financial literacy, how do you come up with a business plan, uh, how can you be like Manu Chandaria, you yeah. know, how, how can you be a businessman uh, and, and, and be successful? Because outside there, there are no jobs. And you know what informed um, this, this move? Mm -hmm. Was that, uh, like right now, you have almost uh, 600,000 students sitting in KCSE. Yes. But out of those 600,000, only 10% will go to the university. And then another 15% will go to the tertiary colleges. Mm -hmm. That means you're talking about a figure of more than 45% who never went to university yeah. and who will not, I mean, they don't go to, the, to, to tertiary colleges. Eh? Mm -hmm. These are people who are there, who are idle, who are ready to be misused. You know, ready to be recruited by by anyone, I, by <laughs> anyone, anyone, quite literally. To you talk problems, about creating yes. uh, the leap hubs in yes, school, and yes. it's very interesting because yes. looking at uh, probably well how we grew up, there's yes. no one time I would remember my parents telling mm. me, mm. you know, study really hard so that you can start your own business. Yes, it was all about study really hard so you can be employed, yes. be a doctor, be a yes. lawyer. So yes. business was not for even business for was for people who've not made it in life. So yes. your backup plan 
and because you mm. didn't pass in your exams, yes. you did not get employed. Mm -hmm. It was business. Not realizing that being your own employer yes. is actually the way to go. Yeah, you remember the song they used to sing? Yeah. So many vijana. Yeah. You know? Okay. I mean, they used to sing that song. Yeah. Every day. When we go back to school, we hear that song. So, and the circumstances were different because those days, you finish school, you get a degree, you probably get recruit, uh, recruited immediately. immediately. But the circumstances have changed. We have the system of education churning out uh, graduates, but there's no corresponding um, jobs being created. This is the reality here. That's true. So, if we are to achieve Vision 2030, mm -hmm. we have to change that. Mm -hmm. And that's why we are going back huh, to prepare these students. Huh? When you create these leap hubs, prepare the high school students that are fine. You go, you're going to do your KCSE. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you go to the university, mm -hmm. well and good. You can even be an entrepreneur in campus. Yeah. And if you go to some of these campuses, you'll find a, a young person, he's, in, he, he, he's, uh, he's, he's studying, but he has opened his cash shop there. It's true. Selling, uh, maybe pep, making photocopies. And on Life and Style, we see them every day. Some of yes. the painters yes. making money on the side. Making money on the side, mm. hustling. And this yeah. is very, very important. Yeah. And then once they are able to make money on the side, then they don't need even to get the help loans. Yeah. Get my point. Mm. So this is also not just this is good for the the ones who go to campus. The ones who go to tertiary mm. college also is important. Give them entrepreneurial skills so that they can also do the same. But we are saying that those who don't go to the university and to the tertiary colleges eh, don't have to sit at home disturbing their mothers. The forty-five percent. Yes, they they can actually go go to uh, Kikomba, buy some mitumba and sell buy, you know, get, get vegetables and sell. But this applies yeah. to that student who is lucky enough to be in a school where yes. there are leap hubs. Yes. So let's talk about the one who's already mm -hmm. out there. We're getting into elections next yes. year. Yes. And of course, we, we, we don't want to see mm -hmm. a situation like 2007 mm -hmm. anymore. Yes. So what are we doing about those uh, those people out there who've already finished a high school mm -hmm. in the 45% mm -hmm. did not get probably a chance to be in a school where there are leap hubs. What are we doing about those ones? So now we have uh, we are basically um, are coming up with a, a, a national campaign mm -hmm. called the National Peace Initiative. The National Peace Initiative. Yeah, this one uh, maybe. So we basically had lunch and uh, it was uh, convened by Dr. Manu Chandaria, who is our patron at the Global Peace Foundation, mm -hmm. and we're bringing in stakeholders. You know, like U UNEP, uh, UNDP, mm -hmm. even the U.S. Embassy. When Standard Group is our, you know, it's a partner. We're there. We're yeah, part yeah. of this initiative. So <laughs> what we're saying is that um, we are setting this campaign basically as a civic education to address those youths mm -hmm. that are used by the politicians. Mm -hmm. Address them, let them know that this is just like, a, like football. Like you support Man U, I support Arsenal. Yeah. Whoever wins, so be it. So as a country, we need to learn these lessons that um, election is not a matter of life and death. Mm -hmm. And we need to learn that whoever vies for election, if the candidates are five or two, then yeah. any of them could be president. We need to be prepared for an eventuality that any of them could be president. That's true. The same we saw in, uh, in Tanzania, the same. Magufuli was elected. Okay. There was a little bit of a problem, but they, they moved on. They moved on. So what we are trying to say is that the youth don't have to suffer because of elections. And that's why we are doing this campaign, and especially we are bringing an angle called um, basically a nexus between business, peace, and elections. And we are saying that uh, politics should improve the lives of the people. Mm -hmm. So as a politician, when you're coming to campaign, you should tell the people, how are you going to improve business? Yeah. How are you going to improve their lives? Mm -hmm. How are the youth going to get investment? How are the youth going to go into business? So we are saying that that is what needs to be, not about inciting people. You know, we don't want to tell you, I mean, we don't want to, uh, to come and tell us how so-and-so is bad, or yeah. how th that tribe is bad, and, and, and stuff like that. So we want to change our politics. And the narrative here also should be, we need to avoid stigma. That if you are a nation, the constitution says we need to have several parties, right? Yes. So if you are a member of Jubilee, for example, mm -hmm. you need to be respected. You have a right to be a member of Jubilee. True. If uh, I'm a member of ODM, for example, I need to be given that right. You know. So we don't want to hear of this situation whereby Jubilee members are not welcome in, uh, in Nyanza, for example, <laughs> or yeah. ODM members are not welcome in Central Province. No, True. we should actually allow everyone to be. So avoid the stigma. And where your political party badge with pride. And what we are saying is that um, the president should be above the power.
And we're looking at a scenario where, imagine that uh, the president huh, yes. is invited by ODM, a delegates conference, uh -huh. to open it. Uh, just, just look at it. That would be amazing. That would be amazing. That because be he's amazing. the president of the Republic of Kenya. True. Not the president of just Jubilee. True. And the same thing with ODM. If, uh, for example, if Raila is in power, huh, for example, then he is able to go and talk to Jubilee people and advise them on how they can organize themselves, how can they do their nominations. So This that is not just happening with uh, the, the youth who are out there. You're yes. also taking it to politicians yes, because yes. I think it starts from there. It starts from down there. Yes, the politicians must understand. For example, if you're an MP mm -hmm. and you're an MP from central province yeah. and you bring a bill to parliament mm -hmm. and the bill goes, let's say the like sexual offenses bill. Yes when it was passed, mm -hmm. the bill will affect every region, not just your area. That's true. Your point. So when you're a member of the Legislative Assembly, you are a member, you are a state officer, and you should behave with that kind of uh, attitude. So we, when we see, you know, politicians going out, inciting, mm. you know, their people to carry pangas and what, mm. that is what we want to avoid. So we are saying that next year should be a different election. We need to see campaigns done, with integrity, and we are saying that um, every state officer, the organization like uh, the ESCC, yeah. do their job. Make sure that those who are inciting people are, are locked in. We need to change our politics. We need to sanitize our politics. We need and to civilize they, our politics. How are they taking it yes. when you have these conversations with yes. our politicians? Yes. Because, you know, for the youth, it's very easy because you'll tell them, listen, you're yes. not working. Yes. I'll give you something to think about. I'll give you something to do. I yes. will, I will um, you know, I will fire up uh, mm. your ideas, mm. ideas in your head. Yes. But these are politicians yes. who are very cunning and tricky. Yes. How do they... How do they receive this kind of information from uh, your foundation? I, I, I know, but you know, the politicians, they may not like it. Huh? Yeah. But when you talk to their clients, which are the youths, okay. when you tell the youths, ignore them. Ah, you know, okay. don't go and throw stones or don't go and do this. Huh? Mm -hmm. Once the, the politician is ignored, huh, then the youths, uh, I mean, they will not be able to, to actually, they have no audience to listen to them. Mm -hmm. So that's why for us, we're more keen on working with the young people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but also the politicians, uh, they're basically, they need to go through civic education. Absolutely. So that they know that, you know, more you say it's just Shambaya, it's true. If you bring bad politics in, you destroy the fabrics of our nation. That's very and true. And this is something that we're trying to do. So we need to empower our youth so that they understand what is elections, mm -hmm. what is democracy. Oh, yes. So that once they understand it, see, democracy is not about uh, k killing or uh, about, about throwing stones. No, mm -hmm. just voting. It's a civic it. process. True. So once they understand it, and I was amazed eh, that, do you know that some people, that there are some youths who don't even know uh -huh. the, the meaning of it. They say, they, they think that, okay, if, if I supported this candidate and it, it, didn't, it didn't succeed, uh -huh. then I need to go and riot. I need to go and, uh, yeah. you know, so that the, the, the candidate is... Uh, is, uh, is, is re-elected or they go yeah, to court. Yes. They or even understand. voting for, mm. they were calling it a six-piece. Yes. So I don't care who the politician is, but yes. I just, you know, as long as they are all ODM, I just go ODM, ODM, ODM. Yes. And what regions are you looking at? Uh, we, are, we are looking at the whole region. Okay. In, uh, when we were in, uh, in t after the t 207, uh, basically in 20, 207 elections, we went to Rift Valley. So mm -hmm. we had something called Rift Valley Peace Initiative, oh. where we actually talked to the youth there. Mm -hmm. And listen to them. Ask, what, what, why did you do this? Why did you? And, and they, they were saying, "Look, we were incited. You know, they open up. And they talk open about up. Those things. Wow. You know, it's all. I mean, it, it, it was there. Yeah. And we, we, I mean, the, it's, it's all over. It's on YouTube. They were saying that basically some of them were just told to do what they did. 2013, again, we came together. Okay. Uh, we had uh, civic education throughout the country. Um, and then it culminated into the National Youth Summit, mm -hmm. which was again aired live by KTN. Yeah. And um, we invited the former president of Seychelles, Sir James Martian, and he appealed to the Kenyan people. He said, don't fight. Don't fight because of elections. And uh, I remember he gave an advice, which I think was never heeded. He said that uh, we need to have, when you, whoever is elected president should appoint a minister for reconciliation oh, and national yeah. cohesion, you know, so that the people are brought together. So they we made, a, they made a department of that. Yeah, a de <laughs> <laughs> Didn't quite uh, put a minister there. Yeah, but yes, yeah. but there's a department. Yeah. Huh? But I'm happy that I've, I've, I've met with uh, Francis Ole Caparo, the chairman of NCIC, yeah. and it looks like he's, uh, he's now passionate about actually having this discussion. And um, he's talking to the politician. 
so that the politicians understand, you know, mm -hmm. that they can never be on the front line to define, to divide this nation. So in this campaign, we are working with all stakeholders, anyone who is involved. If you are in doing your small peace campaign somewhere, we're saying, can you join together or can we have something, what we call collective impact approach, so that if you are doing a campaign, then we come and support you. Absolutely. Or we come and tweet about it so yeah. that people are able to know. Mm. And if someone else has another one, so we come and be able to, to, to support it. And uh, we, so organizations, different initiatives, like um, even Ushahidi, uh, you, yeah. know, you know, the Shahidi, uh, uh, whatever they're doing, right? Even the, in the U.S. elections the yeah. other day, yeah. uh, they were involved. So we mm -hmm. want all players to know that we have to come together so to make sure that this nation doesn't succumb to political pressure. Absolutely. Yes. And uh, we're, we're coming to the end of this conversation and yes. I'd like you to, you know, encourage more of the people in. And I also would like to know yes. how many high schools and are we cross cutting across, uh, are we cutting across the whole nation yes. uh, with the leap hubs? Because those are very, it's, it's a very, like you said, you cannot teach an old dog new, new tricks. tricks. So you have to start from the basics. Yes. So maybe encouragement to all the, you know, schools out there to open up doors. Yes. Uh, for this initiative? Yes. So what we did, what, what, what we started was we created models. As an NGO, mm -hmm. we can only create a model. Okay. But it's the responsibility of government to provide these services. Ah, so right. what we have done is create models that have worked. Mm -hmm. And then Kipra has come in, they have evaluated it and said it's working. Yeah. So now we are trying to work with the Ministry of Education mm -hmm. and stakeholders to up upscale these in various schools. So now I think we have uh, in, in more than 24 schools. That's really and um, we want to scale up to various counties so that uh, we are able to have many youths, actually many schools, uh, you know, uh, uh, having leap hubs so that most of the students can be able to access and learn about how to become entrepreneurs. So we want to basically move away. Uh, the, our system of education should be churning job creators as opposed to churning job seekers, which is the norm. <laughs> which is the norm, yes. absolutely. Yes. So how can people get in touch with you or the foundation if they want to be part of that? Yes. Uh, help change the uh, the world, the country. Yes. We're going into an election year, so I'm sure there's so many companies out there who are looking yes. to do this and are passionate about peace and yes. elections. Yes. How can they get in touch with you? Yes, um, our contacts are there. We have a website, mm -hmm. www.globalpeacekenya.org. Okay. I also have my personal website, www.danieljuma.com. Okay. You know, if any else want to get in touch with me for motivation, if you want to call me to come and motivate your people, to talk about peace, you, when you go to danieljuma.com, you are able to see and get my contacts. Absolutely. Yes. Thank you so much, Daniel. Thank you so much for having me. Well, this has been motivated. We've had Daniel Juma, who's the director of the Global Peace uh, Foundation, Kenya. And uh, we, we are all about, you know, elections are coming. We need to, we need to, have, um, we need to have that mentality of peace and not the same one that we had during the 2007 election. And thank God for this foundation because they took something about it. So remember, every Thursday is all about inspiration, motivation, innovation, encouragement. And uh, well, it doesn't help that we are... If you've noticed, their set is looking all Christmassy. Yes. Oh, Daniel is hoping to walk away with one of our gifts. <laughs> yes, <laughs> we'll yes. talk about that. <laughs> we'll talk yes. about that. Yes. But yes, it's, it's the 1st of December and we are excited for this month. So new amazing things lined up for you for this month on Life and Style. We're taking a very short commercial break. Remember to keep this conversation going on on our social media platforms. It's KT and Life and Style on Facebook. KT and Life underscore Style on Twitter and Instagram. SMS is 228. Four zero. We'll be right back with Catherine Wangi on books and blogs. Stand by for Restaurant of the Week. I want to be, I want to be, I'm going to be, wannabes don't create no honey. That is phenomenal.